I want to preach today on a faith-filled fathers. Faith-filled fathers. Everybody say that. Faith-filled fathers. Faith-filled fathers. The Bible, the Bible says in Joel chapter 3, verse 9, I'm going to hit the road running because I want to honor you, but also I want to give you this word. I want to give you this word. Joel chapter 3, verse 9. Listen to what it says. The Bible says, wake up the mighty men of God. Did y'all hear me? Wake up, the mighty men of God. Wake up, the mighty men of God. Now, let me give you another verse before I get down into this, this what God laid in my heart. In 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 8, this is a powerful, powerful scripture that watch this. I've never heard a sermon, Dave Newton, on what I'm getting ready to read you. I've never heard a sermon on this verse, I'm getting ready to give you. First Timothy chapter five, verse eight. Watch what the Bible says. But if the man does not provide for his own. <laughs> and especially for those of his own house. He, watch what it says. He has denied his faith. He has denied the faith and is worse Oh my God, worse than an infidel. Uh, in other words, the Bible says, men of God, listen to me, if you don't wake up, I'm preaching better than y'all acting, if you do not provide, if you do not take care of your family, and if you don't quit denying the faith that is in you, you're worse off than a lost man, than an unbeliever. And that's some powerful, powerful stuff right there. Well, I love God, but you're not a provider. I love God, but, you're, but you have denied the faith. Are y'all okay? Everybody say, I'm okay. Uh, so let me stop right there. Here, here, let me preach a little bit. Here's what, here's what the world needs. Yes, we need Jesus. Yes, yes, we need Jesus. Yes, we need the church. Yes, we need education. Yes, we need each other. But also, what this world needs is some kingdom men, kingdom fathers, faith-filled fathers. Come on, Holy Ghost, spirit-filled, water-walking, kingdom men, some God-chasing men. Yes, yeah, some faith-filled fathers. That's what we need. That's what we need. We need, and you laugh at me all you want to. But I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ, faith is a difference maker. Faith without works is, y'all know the scripture, but let me ask you something. Let me ask, are you faith-filled this morning? Well, Brian, I'm in church. That don't impress nobody but you and the devil. Listen, if you are a man, listen, I'm hard on men. You know why? Because that's what we need. We need the man to man up. We need the fathers, hallelujah, to become spirit-filled men of God. If you, are a, if you are a man, watch what the Bible says, you are the priest of your home. You are the priest of your home. Listen to me. You are the spiritual influence of your house. To me, everybody, this is me, to me, the man, the father, is the roof on the house. You are the roof on the house. Yep. And y'all know, can you imagine a house without a roof? Can you imagine your home, your house, without the roof? Come on, somebody. All the rain, all the snow, all the bad weather. It would mess up, it would tear up, and it would ruin everything in the house. Now, listen to me, spiritually speaking. Everybody say, spiritually speaking. Yeah, if there isn't no prayer in your house, <laughs> if there is no reading the word of God in your house, if there is nothing spiritually going on in your house, that's like having a house without a roof. That's like having a house without a roof. Listen, you're just letting everything of the world, everything of the world, little by little, inch by inch, day by day, just little sin here and a little sin there, we equal a lot of sin over there. So here's what I'm saying. Men, fathers, you are the roof on the house. You, you are the spiritual covering on your house. And listen, if anything gets in your house, two things is happening. 
Two things is happening. If you are the man, you're, you're supposed to be the roof and the spiritual covering over your house. If, if sin, if anything is getting in your house, two things are happening. Number one, I wrote this down, your roof's leaking. Oh. Number two, are you, are you not a spiritual leader of your house? You don't have a spiritual roof on your house. Are y'all okay? I know it's Father's Day, and I'm supposed to get up here and have a tool belt on, have a hammer and a tape measure, and say, let's measure our distance to God and all the good preacher sermons. But here's what I'm saying. You can have all the tool belts you want. You can have a six-digit uh, income, all the income you want, and you can have a big house. But that don't mean it's spiritually put together by God. You've got to be the covering. You've got to be the roof on the house. Come on, somebody. Yeah, here's, here's, what, here's what I'm saying. Put a spiritual roof on your house. Put a spiritual roof on your house. Y'all got time for me to preach this for a little bit? Genesis chapter 27. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to I'm not gonna linger, but here's what it says. The Bible tells us the story of Isaac blessing his son Jacob. Isaac blessing Jacob. Now listen to me, it gives us two quick secrets how you should bless your children, how you should bless your household. And I'm, this, this is gonna get right in here today. Jacob walks into the house, I love this story, and it had a spiritual roof on it. Isaac was a spiritual man. Isaac was a God chaser. Isaac was the one who, who set the temperature in the, in the room of his house. And he said these words, Jacob said, Father, I want you to bless me. Now, how many of you know it's pretty important when, when your son says, I want you to bless me. I want you to bless me. And I love this. He said, I want you to bless me. One translation says it like this. I love this. Put a blessing on me. I felt the Holy Ghost. Put a, put a bless. Look at your neighbor and say, I put a blessing on me. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. It's Zelcor. Come on. Put a blessing on me. I love this. Jacob walks into his father's room. He had, a, he had a roof. He had a spiritual covering on the house. And he said, Daddy, Father, put a blessing on me. Put a blessing on me. Put a blessing. And I love this. The Bible says, and listen, a lot of you may disagree with this, but listen to me. The Bible said, then Isaac reached out and touched his son. How many of you know it's very important when the Bible says touching and agreeing? Can y'all imagine if Elkhorn Baptist Church gets on one accord, one mind, touching and agreeing, whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever we loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. There is power when God's people come together touching and agreeing. It is, it's powerful. So the first thing that you need to do to give your children and your family as far as a blessing goes, a blessing goes, is number one, you gotta have a meaningful touch. A meaningful. Listen to me, please don't let your children grow up and say these words that I hear all the time. Daddy never told me he loved me. Daddy never hugged me. Daddy never held me. Listen, my son Blake is 29. He's here today. Praise God. Both my babies are here today. It's important that you raise them right. My son's 29 and my daughter, she's 15 going on 39. Y'all help me, somebody. Yeah, and I still, I still, Blake can testify, 29. I still, in Jesus Christ's name, pray blessings over his life. I pray blessings over him. How many of you know you never get too old for a blessing? <laughs> Come on, you never get too old for, for a blessing. I still tell my son that I love him. I still tell my son that he's somebody. I still tell my son he's a good father and he's a good husband. I still tell my son, I really believe in my, in my, with all my heart that Blake's called to do something mighty powerful for the kingdom of God. And I'm not going to step back as a daddy and watch it waste away. I tell my daughter, 15 years, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. You're God's girl. Oh, she can play the piano. She can play the keys. Y'all help me. Yeah, y'all have heard her. She, she can open that voice and proclaim and prophesy that dead bones are getting up. That, that's powerful stuff. Oh, I don't want to forget about my Dino. Y'all go ahead. Don't, her never said, don't be hating on this one. Come on, tell somebody, don't be hating, y'all. Come on now. Yeah, don't be hating on I got, I got to talk about the cream of my coffee. I got to talk about my salt shaker. Y'all are boring. 
I, I'm telling you, you got to have a good marriage. You, you got you to rock it like it's hot. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to do the stanky leg. Huh? It's okay. Yo, look, all the religious people are going, my God, where am I at? You're at a church that's real. You're at a church that's got a covering over. Somebody say amen. We believe that life comes in the power of the tongue. And sometimes you got to say, God, I don't know where you're at. I don't know how you're working it. But God, I believe in you. Yeah, my, my, my wife. And I'm being honest when I say this. Outside of my salvation, and that's the main thing in my life, I ain't going to hell. Outside of my salvation, the second greatest blessing God's ever gave me is my wife. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's my wife. Everybody else can turn against you, and she, she's still propping you up. I'm telling you the truth. I love her, and she's the mother of my children. She's my bride. She's my helpmate. She blesses me. She encourages me. When everybody else is coming against me, she's like, I'm telling you, Miss Rafferty can rise up. Yeah. So listen, here's what I'm saying. Reach out and touch your children. Reach out and bless your family. Hug them, squeeze them. Tell them how much you love them. Come on, somebody. Because one day you may not have them. Yeah, because one day you may not have. So while we have each other here on earth, while we have each other here on earth, I'm telling you, you know what your kids need? They need a daddy that's going to step up and put a spiritual covering over their life. And sometimes you may have to whip them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Come on. Sometimes you may have to take them behind the Holy God woodshed. But here's what I'm saying. Listen, I don't like pageants. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a, I'm a man. But my little girl was in a pageant one time. <laughs> David, I didn't, I didn't want to go. I never in my life they get all dude up. Have the makeup on. I'm talking snap, crack, You know what I'm saying? And, and anyway, I was, I was up back out in the audience. And this is the truth. She walked across the stage and she was way like it. And she seen me and she went. <laughs> she stopped the pageant. She stopped Destiny Lee Shane Rafferty. There's daddy. What I'm saying is that sometimes you've got to do things that you really don't want to do. But that's what daddy's does. They go above, they go beyond. Sometimes you got to stop work. Sometimes you got to go home. Some, y'all, uh, hallelujah. One of the worst things I hear in life and in ministry is I wish I could go back. Yeah. I wish I could hug them one more time. I wish I could spend one more day with them. Listen, a meaningful touch means something. How many of y'all know that a meaningful touch Mean something. I want you to go ahead and listen to me. I want you to look at your neighbor and I want to say, you mean something to me. Come on, tell them. Husbands, it'd be a good time for you to make up right now. Come on, tell them. You mean something to me. Y'all ready? Let's go deeper. Let's tell them, I love you. I love you. Come on, we got half this church saying, look, when you know something's up, when you say, look at your neighbor and tell them you love them. I love you. <laughs> you all right? Y'all ain't even looking at each other. That tells me a lot about relationship. But boy, when you look somebody in the eye, and I look at my son, he's 29, you ain't gonna fail. You ain't gonna fall. You ain't gonna slip. You ain't gonna mess up. I refuse to let you mess up. You're not gonna be a failure. God's done something good. Y'all help me preach this morning. You see, you know why I know this sermon's like, a, like, like, a, like an oxymoron to a lot of people? Because we live in a negative, stinking, nasty generation. Don't get me off on something else. Number two, he said, as I'm almost done. It's only 11 after. Number two, speak blessings. Everybody say it, speak blessings. You want to bless your children? Speak a blessing over their life. Come on, speak a blessing over their life. The Bible says that Isaac literally, I love this, opened his mouth and started speaking blessings over Jacob. Opened his mouth and started speaking it. See, nobody can read your mind. I tell my wife this all the time. I can't read your mind. Y'all's too. It's true. I, listen, 
Your children need to hear. I don't care how old they are. I don't care how young they are. Destiny was eight. No, she was nine months old. We was in China. The first thing that they done when they hand me Destiny is I started to say, God, thank you for my gift. God, she's going to be special. God, she's going to touch lives. God, there's a worship leader in there. Listen to me. I was over in, in Ditto's old house. And there was a song that filled the atmosphere. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost just invaded my home. And it was just me and Destiny. I just picked that little girl up and I said, you're going to be somebody. You're not going to never fail. Y'all, y'all hear me? Y'all, come on, somebody. You, you got you to speak blessings over your children. Yes, we lived in a messed up, nasty, stinking generation, but not anymore. We got a generation that if we'll speak life, if we'll speak blessings, if we'll say you can do it, if you, no matter no weapon comes against you, will ever, ever, ever prosper. Greater is he that is in you. Come on. Yeah, I speak blessings. I speak blessings over my children. I speak blessings over my wife. Church, here's what I'm saying. Your tongue, that little three-inch member, unless you're Gene Simmons, that little three... Where'd that come from? Anyway, <laughs> your tongue should be a blesser, not a curser. Your tongue should give life. Come on. Your tongue should give blessings. Tongues being positive, uplifting, and encouraging. Church, listen to me. Dr. James Dotson says these words, and he's not God Jr., but when he said this, it really stuck in my spirit. Every time you criticize, Every time something negative goes towards your children, your family, your church. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. That, that person you work with that gets on your nerves. When you, when you criticize and tear down and speak death over anybody, Dr. James Dodson said it takes seven positive words of encouragement and blessings to destroy one bad word. Wow! That'll make you think. I hope y'all go today and y'all leave here. You're going to go, is that positive or is that? Yeah, speak blessings. Everybody say speak blessings. Because if you criticize, you tear down, you rip somebody apart, you think you're big. But God says these words, when you come after my children, you're not going after them, you're going after him. You got to speak life. You've got to speak blessings. You've got to call a time out and say, listen, I know you're struggling. I know something's going on in your life. You've got to pray for your children. And don't expect somebody else to raise your kids. Woo! God gave you your babies. You was, watch, hallelujah. You will stand before God Almighty one day. And if you don't have a spiritual covering over your house, you you will give an account. Does that, does that, does that mess with, it messes with me, Jared? Watch this, y'all ready? I get one chance to be y'all's pastor. I get one chance on raising Blake Salee. I get one chance on raising my little China doll. And I'm gonna be the best that I possibly can be. And that's what we gotta get the mindset I don't agree with everything that Blake and Destiny, I don't agree with everything I do. Come on, somebody. And y'all don't either. But here's the bottom line. There is power. When you throw your legs over your bed and you're sitting there saying, God, I don't know what today holds, but I know you hold it. God, I don't know who's gonna try to come at me. But God, you said, hallelujah, when somebody comes at me one way, you'll throw a standard up, and God, you'll divide them seven different ways. God, there's power in my tongue, and today, God, I am good. Today, I am healthy. Today, I am strong. Today, my children are going to do something good. Today, Elkhorn Baptist Church is going to go here to there. We need a God in this house with a spiritual covering over it. Somebody give God a big old praise in here today. Come on. Come on, somebody. That's, your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. Your words are powerful. Let me ask you something. When was the last time you spoke powerful, encouraging, positive, uplifting words over your family and over your children? Are you sitting here today going, oh, my God. Why did they sing five songs? 
Why in the world did Brian preach anyway? He said, you got, listen to me. You will stand before God on your life that you live here. I highly advise people. And here's what I say. If you're truly born again, you'll want to speak life. If you, if you watch this, if the Holy Ghost is really in you, you'll want to be a life giver and not, not, not jerk death out of somebody. Listen, here's one thing I've noticed about my children. Y'all ready? They value the approval of their daddy. My, I, I thought about this. Dusty wrote me a card. I didn't bring it. Uh, I should have. I disobeyed God this morning. Um, but here's the deal. One thing that touched me in that letter, Hallmark couldn't do this. She said, thank you for raising me right. We, we asked for it to rain. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, let it rain, amen, here it is. <laughs> well, <laughs> isn't it funny, man, we, we pray for it to rain, then we forget our umbrellas. <laughs> Listen to this. We need God's blessings. Watch this. God, God spoke this to me. If, you have, if you're a note taker, I'm almost done. Praise team, you guys come. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. This is so, listen to me. This is so powerful. I'm, I'm almost done. That's the second time. I got one more. 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. This is a story about King David. Everybody say King David. Most people, when they look at David, he wasn't a king. He was just a shepherd boy. But I love King David's heart. Even though he messed up, even though he got another woman pregnant, even though he killed that woman's husband. I love this. Watch this. The Bible says, 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 20. It says, he, David, watch, went back home and blessed his house. You say, Brian, what was he doing? I love this. David had the Ark of the Covenant with him. The Ark of the Covenant, this is so good. The Ark of the Covenant was God's presence. God's presence. Watch this, you ready? King David took the Ark of the Covenant, Jimmy, back to church, and then he left the church and went back home and blessed his family. Listen to me. This, this is where God got me really, really good right here. What would happen if every daddy... If every father, if every man would leave the presence of God today and take that presence back home and bless your family. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. Yeah, what would happen? See, watch. Here's what we want. Y'all ready? Here's what we want. We want God to show up here. But God says, I want to go home with you. We want God to show up here in a mighty way. We want to experience him here. But I'm telling you where the church started was home. You know why there was a mighty rushing wind in the upper room? It's because daddy had it right. Daddy went to the upper room and daddy said, if you'll come up with me and I'll put a spiritual hedge of protection up over your life and then you experience Pentecost. Could it be the reason why the church has not experienced Pentecost is because they don't have a spiritual covering. Could it be the reason why your, your home is a stinking mess right now? It's because the man, y'all watch me. You're the provider, but you're not the covering. Oh, Holy Ghost. That's what the Bible needs. Y'all listen. We need, yes, watch. We need God's blessing here at this church. How many of y'all know that? We need it in the church house. But we also need God's blessing in our own personal house. If you just got it in the church house and it's not at your house, you got a leaky roof. You got a leaky roof. You say, Brian, is your family perfect? Look at us. Y'all know, y'all answer that. Y'all answer that. You can look at me and I went totally against Southern Baptist. Because Southern Baptist think you ought to have a suit on. Part your hair. King James only. And Lord, if you mention divorce. You're completely out. But I got news. I had a spiritual covering over my house. Spiritual covering. I had a praying granny that could pray the woods on fire. I had a mama that when my daddy walked out of my life, 
that did, my stepfather came, came into my life when I was 10. You say, Brian, how in the world, how in the world did you get where you're at today? Number one, his name is Jesus Christ and Jesus only. Number two, I had a spiritual covering over my house that my mama looked at me and said, I don't care if you had a father. I don't care where he's at, but you're going to be something in your life. You're not going to fail. You're not going to. Yes, I experienced stuff. Yes, I had a wild side to my life. I take it back and I repent of it. But you know what? I feel the Holy Ghost. When I was living wild, and I was doing things I knew I should not have done. I didn't see pink elephants. I heard Granny's voice. Something always was trying. Wooing me back. Wooing me back. Brian, you can't live like that. Brian, you can't talk like that. Brian, you don't need to go there. How many of y'all can testify when you was at the wrong place at the wrong time? Come on, somebody, that you had a God in you. You had a spirit. You had a spiritual covering over your life. You heard a voice. And I'm here today to tell anybody, watch. If God called you to it, He'll pull you through it. Let me, let me, Joshua. Listen. Joshua was 110 years old when he wrote this verse. It's so good. Y'all ready? You ready for this? Because you're going to be an amazing, amazing, amazing father, daddy, husband. You're a newlywed, right? Yeah, amen. Yeah. Austin, Kay, listen to this. They're getting ready to get married. Yeah. At 100, Mitchell, at 110 years old. Travis, Listen to what Joshua said. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Come on, daddies. You say, I may have messed up. I may not have been there. I'm telling you, at 110 years old, he said, as for me and Elkhorn, we're going to serve God. As for me and my children, we're going to serve God. That's exactly what we need today. We need Joshua men. Somebody faith-filled father, a spiritual influence, a spiritual covering over your house. Somebody that's going to put a spiritual roof on your house. I, I close with this. That's my third time. Aaron, I want you to put the picture of Finley up. This young man. <laughs> I seen that picture. And I can't get away from it. That little boy's name's Finley. Finley Young. Kevin and Shauna's little baby boy. That was his first steps into church. That was May 31st. Our first Sunday back, his first steps was at church. But I noticed something. His head's up and he's looking at his daddy. Feel the Holy Ghost. I guarantee if his daddy would have took a left, Finley would have took a left. If his daddy would have said, No, 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 I ain't going to church today. Oh, there's a bunch of heathens in there. And if he turned around, that little boy, Finley, I'm telling y'all, he would have followed his daddy. We need daddies. Y'all can laugh. You can look. I'm telling you, we need daddies like Kevin right there. And Kevin and Sean, I applaud you. You don't sit back and say, well, we got four or five. How many kids y'all have? Five? Y'all pray. Five. Listen, I don't know. I can barely get, I can barely get destiny ready. Five? And they're not late. walking to church and he's got little footprints right behind him saying daddy wherever you go I'll follow you daddy if you make a U-turn I'll follow you daddy if you want to go to church I'll follow you I'm telling y'all today there's 110 
life ministry here at this church. Some of you feel like it's too late. Some of you say, Brian, I didn't tell my kids. I didn't hold them. I didn't tell them how much I love them. Watch, you, ha- you got breath today, right? Come on, you got breath today. You can make a phone call. You can invite them over. You can spend time with them. Watch, you ready? It's never too late to say I love you. It is never too late to have a meaningful touch. It is never too late to speak blessings over your family. Isaac said, Jacob, two things I'm going to do. I need to touch you. And number two, I'm going to bless you. So y'all ready? I'm standing to your feet. Let's, let's wrap this up. How do you bless your children? You don't lose a meaningful touch. You don't lose a meaningful touch. And number two, you always speak blessings over them. There's my grandson right there in the middle of the aisle, little, little pinna bab right there. Hey, Walker. Hi, honey. It's Beep Pop. Yeah, you'll come up here? Come on, you'll go up here with Beep Pop? You say, Brian, what are you doing? I, it's my sermon. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? Look, you say hi to everybody. He want, he's more worried about the drums, amen? I get one chance with him. I'm going to be the best beat pop that I can possibly be. He is not going to fail. <laughs> he is not going to lose. I speak blessings and life and encouragement over him. I pray. I know that God had a Peter and a James and a, and a John, but here's a walker. He's a water walking. Come on, somebody. I, I need to think. I can't think that fast. Get one chance. Lord, you are a great mama. Don't you ever doubt. Don't you ever doubt what God's doing in your life. Both your babies are here. Both your babies have an excellent mama. Thank you for not giving up. Thank you for encouraging them. Thank you for putting a spiritual roof over their house. And thank you for being here today. You're excellent. So, this altar's open. Hi, daddies. I don't know. When's daddies? When was the last time you prayed a blessing over your children? When's the last time you prayed a blessing? Spoke a blessing, held their hand, pulled them in, and said, Today I'm gonna be a daddy. So I don't know what's gonna get ready to happen in here. I don't know where y'all are at. I know where I'm at. And it is time, y'all ready? To love passionately. To hold them while you can hold them. One day he's gonna be holding B-Pop. You know what I'm saying? They grow up. How, how many of y'all know Travis? You and James, you got Brooke and you got you got your babies, but watch, they're not babies no more. Watch, I just don't want y'all to miss this opportunity. I just don't want y'all to miss this opportunity. While they're little, love them. Amen. Love them when they're old too, but especially when they're little. So Father God, in Jesus Christ's name. Yeah. God, I pray blessings over these beautiful people. God, I just pray, God, I speak blessings over every person here today. I pray a blessing over my grandson, God. Use him for your glory. God, take him and use him. Keep him healthy. Keep him strong. Let him grow up to God to be be a mighty, mighty, mighty man of God. Lord, I pray for Richard and Wanda, Don and Tommy, Jennifer. God, I pray. God, I pray for everybody here. Pray for Tim. God, he said he hadn't been to church for three years, but Tim, welcome home. Welcome back to church. You're on the front row, man. Thank you for being here. God always, watch, any good daddy worth his salt always has open arms. So in Jesus' name, God, work on your people. Bless them in Jesus' name. And all God's people say, this altar's open. Brian, I thought we had the COVID-19. God is bigger. This altar's open. Grab your children by the hand. A meaningful touch. And a daddy speaking over their life. Watch this. My daughter's 15. She wrote me a letter today. And she said, I love you. It's powerful stuff. You guys come if God's dealing with you in Jesus' name. Come on, praise me.